Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to talk about some relatively new security features in Facebook uh, and how to set them up and what they can do. Uh, so I've already created a Facebook account here and basically you go into the settings menu. Okay, And then in the settings menu uh, underneath the security tab um, First, you should go through all of these. Um, they have uh, quite a few ways to potentially make you more secure or find out if somebody's actually accessing your account. So if you want to try to keep people out of your account, um, you do need to set up some of these. And today I'm going to be going to be talking about login approvals and uh, a public key, adding a public key, which is a new feature that um, I, I believe was just added. So these login approvals, if you click login approval, uh, then it will drop down and before uh, basically the only login approval that you could add was to add a phone so if you click add phone then it will ask for your phone number um, and then how you actually want to be contacted and basically the only option here is sending me uh, send me a text um, so here add your phone uh, add a phone number maybe for example I don't particularly like adding my phone um, I don't want uh, I don't see any reason for Facebook to need my, my phone number um, and sometimes I don't even install the apps on my phone so why before whenever that was the only option I didn't really like it because I wanted the ability to have other ways um, without attaching my, my account to a phone number uh, to be able to get my um, or to be able to protect my account. So this was the default um, method before and Facebook does constantly ask you for your phone number if you don't put it in. Um, so most people have probably already enabled this. The ones I'm going to talk about today are these, first off, the security key and code generator and recovery codes. So um, first let's talk about what two-factor authentication is. And two-factor authentication basically means that you have um, two different ways to authenticate yourself. And it could be, um, for example, you know a password. So that's something you know. And all of these are essentially something that you have, right? So we're looking for two different ways to verify that you are who you say you are. Um, a password by itself can be easily guessed. There's lots of different ways you know, around uh, using passwords that can be easily stolen if somebody's uh, sniffing your traffic. Um, if somebody, if you only have password protection um, and somebody really wants to get into your account, they can, um, or they, they could eventually most likely, okay? So having another factor makes it uh, much, much more difficult because not only do you have to take for example, something someone knows, but you also need to get something that someone has. Um, and have, uh, taking over something someone has is very difficult. So for example, um, phones, another reason I don't particularly like phones as an authentication method is if my phone is compromised and uh, basically if my phone is compromised and someone somehow gets my password, then they could probably also get the SMS or the text message from my phone. Um, you know, it, that's for me, that's not a very secure way to do things, right? I don't want to, I don't necessarily um, want a, uh, a way that's potentially compromised to be an authentication method. Um, so, what I particularly use are these security keys. So, I have a, uh, a UB key, or they're using this universal second factor security key uh, to log in through USB or NFC. Um, NFC, uh, a lot of keys. Um, well, at least my key um, and some newer keys support NFC and that's basically near field communication. You can use this on newer uh, smartphones if you're trying to authenticate on your smartphone or uh, like in my case, I'm using it uh, over USB and then I remove it whenever I don't need to use it. So here we have security keys. If you do add key, um, and this picture is, it looks to me like a YubiKey. I don't know if there's other keys that look like this, but there's a, a, a product called YubiKey and I will Yubi, oh, I spelled it wrong, okay, Yubico. So this uh, Yubi key from Yubico, they have a Yubi key and it's basically, uh, I'll show a picture of mine. Um, they have uh, just this stick that fits in USB and then whenever it asks you for your password, you uh, tap this button and it generates a one-time password using using their, um, their own protocol. Uh, so if you add key, for example, 
Uh, right now I have my YubiKey inserted into my, my computer and it's blinking. Um, so if I just tap the YubiKey, okay, so now it's uh, um, confirmed or it saw my YubiKey and it's asking for my password to be able to add it. Um, that's all it is. And once, once that key is registered, now it's going to ask you for that key along with your password. And all you have to do if you have the key with you is tap the key um, to, to verify that it actually is you. And that key is very, very difficult to, um, to spoof or to pretend like, or, or for somebody to steal, let's say, the information uh, about, the, about the key uh, or pretend to have the key, essentially. You can't, uh, it's very difficult to try to um, uh, make it look like you have the key when you actually don't, okay? So these keys are extremely handy. I've, I've really treated mine very, very poorly and it doesn't break, uh, it's water resistant and all these things. Uh, the one I have is from Yubico. I have a YubiKey Neo, which is relatively old now. Um, and they are very interesting um, little devices, basically, okay? So uh, security keys, I strongly recommend using security keys because that is one of the safest ways um, you can use for second uh, two-factor authentication. For example, um, if your phone is compromised, well, you, you might be able to get uh, SMS messages. Security keys, they have to actually know your password and steal your physical security key. Um, and they, in this case, you also have to tap the button to be able to like execute uh, the security key. So um, these are extremely, extremely secure. Uh, the problem is you have to carry it with you all the time if you want to authenticate to these websites. Uh, the next is a code generator. And there's lots of different apps. For example, a uh, Facebook mobile app uh, has a code generator that you can set up, or you can also set up third-party apps. Um, for example, you might, um, you might have, uh, I don't know, Google Authenticator or some, some other third-party app. You can set that up. Uh, and use it with this. Again, uh, that would potentially most likely be on your mobile phone. So if your mobile phone is compromised and they can open up the, the code generator, then they might be able to generate um, apps. So think about um, how, how people can potentially get access to this. If they have my password um, and they are not on my computer, um, do they have access to my phone in some way, either remotely or locally? It's very unlikely somebody's going to have local access to my phone unless they steal it. Um, but it's, it's potentially likely that somebody takes over my phone and has remote access to it, right? So text messages and code generator, um, while they will stop most attacks that are not targeting you, if you think you're being targeted or something like that, then, um, you know, the remote uh, exploitation potential is relatively high. Um, security keys Again, there's no, you know, there's no remote connection, and if somebody gets access to your computer, they can't execute the key. There has to be somebody there that actually presses uh, the button on the key to make the um, the, the second factor kind of um, uh, generate. So security keys are relatively secure, but um, you know, they're you have to carry them around if you if you want to carry them around, or they would be in a specific location. Um, which, you know, somebody could come in and steal the security key and potentially log in like that. The, the benefit of the security key is that you would potentially know if it's missing. Um, and if it is missing, then you could potentially uh, remove the security key from being another factor in authentication before something actually happens. So, um, I, again, I really like security keys. They are a little bit inconvenient, especially if you're not used to it. But um, in my opinion, these are the best ways uh, so far to to uh, protect ourselves. Um, uh, code generator, I also use this as a backup. And then we also have recovery codes, which you can print out and put in a safe or some other secure location. Okay, so um, I strongly recommend looking into, you know, at least at least text messaging and, and code generator and recovery codes. Make sure whenever you enable two-factor authentication that you're using, you know, at least two of these. You need always to have some sort of fallback because, you know, what happens if you lose your phone? If you were only using text messages and code generator and they were both on your phone and you don't have any recovery code saved, uh, if your phone is lost or stolen, then you no longer have the second factor. 
right? So I, I strongly recommend using at, at least two of these. Um, try to think about where your authenticator is and what's the risk if you lose a device or lose that key. So for example, if you lose the security key, but you also have code generator or recovery codes, maybe recovery codes are in a, uh, a vault in your home, code generator is on your phone and security key is, I don't know, at your office or you carry it around or something like that. Well, you still have code generator and recovery codes as backup. If you lose your phone and the security key or they're stolen or taken somehow, you can still get in um, because of the recovery codes. So make sure you're always, if you enable two-factor authentication, make sure you're thinking of how to secure that information and how to back it up. Okay, um, so I really wanted to stress uh, these, um, these authentication methods actually exist on a lot of websites now. Uh, Facebook, to my knowledge, just added them. Um, and I thought it was really important for people to start to use them uh, to secure their accounts because on Facebook we have a lot of personal data and it needs to be protected, uh, in my opinion, much, much better. Um, so go through and look at these security methods and um, next I'll talk about uh, some other uh, new features that they've added inside security. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please subscribe for more.